On the evening of October 12th, 2001, the small Pacific town of Bikini Bottom welcomed its newest resident. However, this new neighbor wasn't just any fish. It was big, wiggly, and it ate everything. This is the story of the Alaskan Bull War. Scientific name Megascolides alaskus, though commonly referred to as the Alaskan bullworm, is among the largest worm species in the world. While the Megascolides alaskus is generally considered to be an herbivore, there are some accounts that the bullworm has a taste for butt. But after that fateful night when the Alaskan bullworm found itself in Bikini Bottom, the residents woke up to a town nearly destroyed and convened at the local dining establishment, the Krusty Krab, to find a solution. I got it! Let's all buy a Krabby Patty! Tensions were rising, many fish still in disbelief of the destructive power of the Alaskan bull worm. But make no mistake, this worm was big, scary, and pink. Ultimately, two voices rose above the rest with solutions. Patrick Starr, who believed the residents of Bikini Bottom should take Bikini Bottom and push it somewhere else. And Sandy Cheeks, who vowed to go after the worm herself following the loss of her beloved tail. I am gonna get back what's mine. The two factions that formed around these two warring ideologies were relentless, but nevertheless, they persisted. As Sandy Cheeks embarked on her expedition to confront the Alaskan bullworm, she was met with fierce resistance by SpongeBob SquarePants. The local fry cook and jellyfishing teacher claimed to have seen the power wielded by the worm. He tried to protect his friend from meeting a similar fate to his pineapple home, which was destroyed the night before. Sandy! I'm not gonna let you get killed. If you find him, you'll get eaten for sure. Some strategies Mr. Squarepants attempted included bribery with ice cream, impersonating Miss Cheeks' father. Candy, this is your pappy speaking, and I forbid you to go after this worm. Y'all come back here, young lady. And attempting to gaslight Sandy into believing a string and paper clip from his pocket were Sandy's tail. Sandy's tail was not a string and paper clip. Needless to say, SpongeBob's attempt at stopping Sandy's rampage were futile. As the sea squirrel and karate master found the cave the bullworm called home and quickly found her revenge. Following a riveting fight between the worm and the squirrel, the day seemed done as Sandy had defeated the once monstrous Alaskan bullworm. There was just one problem. Sandy had not fought the Alaskan bull worm. You see, the Megascolides alaskus is not just the largest worm species in the world. The Megascolides alaskus is so large that when resting, its open mouth can easily be mistaken for a cave. A cave exactly like the one Sandy Cheeks thought she had defeated the worm inside of. But instead, all she did was walk herself right inside the mouth of the beast that nearly consumed Bikini Bottom. But not only did Sandy survive her encounter with the Alaskan bullworm, but she had lassoed the giant worm and was riding it off into the sunset far, far away from the town of Bikini Bottom. Meanwhile, Patrick and the other residents of Bikini Bottom were hard at work pushing the town somewhere else. Push! Somewhere out of harm's way that the worm could never reach. Somewhere like a distant ravine, Push! far from the Alaskan bullworm. A ravine that, as luck would have it, was the exact same ravine that Sandy Cheeks was riding the worm towards at that very moment. 
Ultimately, as is often the case throughout history, Bikini Bottom's attempt at protecting their beloved town is what led to its destruction. But a town isn't defined by its tragedy. No, a town is defined by the way they respond to it. Though much of Bikini Bottom was destroyed in a ravine that day, like a bubble rising from the depths, the people of Bikini Bottom rebuilt. And Sandy Cheeks even tamed the Alaskan bullworm and trained it as a pet. A pet that, perhaps, serves as a lesson for us all. Because as easy as it is to fear the unknown, history has taught us that befriending the unknown can prevent a lot of destruction.